Hello brothers and sisters, it's me again Peter and today is Monday. Today I want to talk more concerning Daniel 9.27 because lately I've been hearing rumors that people are saying in Daniel 9.27 where it's written in the middle of the seven he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. People are saying that this verse was referring to Yeshua, to Jesus, that he will put the end to sacrifice and offering. But let us get more into the word of God and see if truly this verse was referring to Yeshua or not. So in order to understand that verse, let us start with Daniel 9.24 and read the, read the whole thing so that we can understand this scripture, this prophecy that Daniel was given by the angel. In Daniel 9.24 it says, Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Seventy sevens, that's 490 years are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression to sin, to put, a, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And then we continue in Daniel 9.25. I want you guys to move your Bibles so that you can follow it with me. In Daniel 9.25, it says, Know and understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the Messiah, the ruler comes. There will be seven sevens, that's 49 years, and 62 sevens. 62 times seven, that's 434 years. It will be rebuilt with streets and trench, but in times of trouble. So, do, so the prophecy here is saying, for, from the issuing of the decree, to restore and to build Jerusalem, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. And then he says, after the sixty-two sevens, sixty-two sevens, four hundred and thirty-four years, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. So let's go back. The issuing of the decree to restore and to build Jerusalem. When did that decree go forth? That decree went forth in 457 BC. But the king Ataxes, he gave that decree in 457 BC. So if you count backwards 49 years plus 434 years, basically saying 483 years, you count backwards because they were counting backwards, it will fall in AD 27. Actually, it's AD 26 because now because we don't count zeros, falls to AD 27. You with me? From 457 BC, you count backwards 483 years, falls out to AD 27. So what happened to AD 27? What happened in AD 27? Well, according to according to Luke Luke the third chapter, it was the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. And during that time, that's when Jesus went to John the Baptist and he was baptized. During AD 27, Jesus went to John the Baptist and he was baptized and the Holy Spirit filled him. And then from, from that, Jesus went to the desert and he was tempted. And after that, he went on preaching what? In, uh, in, uh, in Mark chapter, Mark chapter, chapter 1 verse 14 to 15 says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time is fulfilled. Jesus said the time is fulfilled. Which time? The Daniel time. The time is fulfilled, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. And that's when the message of the Messiah began. Right? Okay, let's continue. So, um, yeah, after 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. So this anointed one will be cut off. But the question is, why will he be cut off? Let's see. Isaiah speaks. Uh, Isaiah fifty-three uh, says it all. Uh, Isaiah fifty-three. Isaiah fifty-three. Isaiah fifty-three, chapter eight. It says, "By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendant? For he was cut off, cut off. Remember." The Messiah, he, the, the anointed one, he, he said he will be cut off. 
In Daniel uh, 9, 26, say, uh, after the 62 servants, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah 53, verse 8 says, By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. And then Daniel continues. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The Romans, they destroy the sanctuary in 70 AD. The people of the ruler, the prince who shall come in the future, the Antichrist. You see, the people of the ruler who shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And that happened in 70 AD. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolation have been decreed. Now we get finally to Daniel 9.27. Listen clearly. Daniel 9.27. It starts like this. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. For seven years. He will confirm a covenant with many for seven years. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And who is this? The one who makes a covenant for seven years is the one who will put an end to sacrifice and offering. Let's ask ourselves, Jesus, did Jesus make any covenant with anyone for seven years? No, he didn't. Did Jesus stop the sacrifice from continuing and offering? Did he stop it? Jesus was the final sacrifice. But the thing is, they continue sac after Jesus was, uh, has died and has ascended to heaven. The Jewish people continue doing their sacrificial thing as they used to do until the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. They continue. He did not stop it. But those sacrifices meant nothing because the Messiah has already come. He has atoned. He was the sacrifice. The sacrifice. Because remember in the Old Testament, like God like, was teaching the children of Israel without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. So all of this was foreshadow of what Christ will do what he will do in the future what christ was this was all foreshadow for christ what he will do in the future but did he stop it like did he put an end to it no they continued they continued doing their sacrificial in the temple and everything until the temple was destroyed but that those sacrifices meant nothing because the messiah has already come and died and atoned once and for all he has already put like he has already atoned like for the sins of those who would believe in him once and for all. So he says in Daniel 9.27, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed, that is, decreed is poured out of him. So who will make this covenant? Who will make this covenant for seven years? Is the prince who shall come. Is the one who shall make this covenant for seven years. He is the one in the middle of the week. He shall put an end to sacrifice. He shall put an end to sacrifice. And offering. In the first three years and a half. You know what happens. In, th in Thessalonians. Um, what is it? In uh, Second Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians, let's go to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, 2, Thess uh, 2 Thessalon Thessalonians verse 2, chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, it says, do not don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellious occurs and the man of lawless is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and he will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in, the, in, in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. So the Antichrist He'll be sitting, he'll go to the temple of God, setting himself as God, proclaiming himself to be God. 
And that's why this sacrifice shall cease. Because first of all, he will desecrate the temple. He will desecrate the temple. And that's why Jesus speaks in Matthew 24 that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. And when they flee to the mountain, what happened in the, in the last three years and a half? God will protect the, the Jewish people. Like God will protect them, the, the Jewish people, from the annihilation of the Antichrist. In the, uh, they, they will uh, run to the, to, to, the, to the desert and there God will protect them for three years and a half. Their God will protect them. And that's why like, they will call upon the name of the Lord. They will say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's when they will acknowledge the Lord. But in this prophecy right now, it says, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. The Antichrist. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, for seven years. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out of him. To say this verse that uh, is referred to Christ, that's very wrong. That's actually very wrong. Jesus is not going to set any abomination. And brothers and sisters, we need to stay true to the word of God no matter what. We need to stay true to the word of God. Let us not go looking out, out for uh, other non-biblical text written i don't know by who uh, some one of the brother i had him quoting the book uh, of Assins, the the gospel according to the Assins. it's a terrible book i read one of the verses says that jesus was speaking to god like describing god as father mother he said he is a she and she is a he there's no way written in the old testament that god is a he and uh, is, is, is a he and he's a she so he refers to God like Father, Mother. We give thanks to Father, Mother in the gospel of their sins. And that's what we were warned in the Bible, that if anyone should come to you preaching another gospel that we have not taught you, you're not to accept it. You're not to accept it. Even if an angel comes to you and preach you another gospel, you're not to accept it. Stay faithful to the word of God and seek the Lord with all your heart and mind and pray to God that he may fill you with the Holy Spirit, that he may teach you of all things. The most important thing is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, you are sealed until, for the, until the day of redemption. That's all you need, the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything. He will teach you the truth about God and he will show you of things to come. So stay truthful to the word of God. And the word of God is very clear. The one who shall make a covenant for seven years is the one who shall put an end to sacrifice and offering and he's the one who shall set up an abomination that causes desolation. And we know that as the son of perdition. So brothers and sisters, let us not go on looking for other texts, other biblical texts, because Satan is, Satan, he like confusion and he's going to confuse people. He's the master of confusion. He's a liar and a deceiver, so be careful. And everything you hear, test it by the word of God. And if it doesn't match with the word of God, cast it out. So be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, is like a rolling lion looking for someone to devour. So stay strong and um, keep praying, seeking the Lord with all your heart. The time is drawing near. Jesus Christ our Lord is coming soon. So shalom, shalom. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace.